Hey guys! Welcome back to my channel. It's me again from like five seconds ago. Um, I'm filming part three the same day as part two, but I'm uploading two different videos as I said in my previous video, which was like five seconds ago, but also a week ago. Okay, <laughs> moving on, we're going to finish talking about my short story collection. Okay, where did I stop? December. Okay, December. December. Okay, this was a very difficult story. This story is called Behind the Closed Door and it was very difficult for me to write. I think this is the longest story in my collection. It's about 50 pages or so, um, 12,000 words, something like that. It's a very long story for a short story. But I wanted to include this because I felt like it belonged in here. This story is a confession, actually. Um, this old man, <laughs> Panayotis Kuluris, who's been in jail for countless years, he doesn't even remember how many years he's been there, um, he's been there for killing women. It's not like he's, he's not really a serial killer in the sense like in Fresh Paint where she consciously kills her victims. Um, in this story Panayotis is unconsciously like he can't control his anger, he's not doing it on purpose but he's also not stopping so it's kind of a weird situation and there are there's like some back and forth where he describes his uh, killings and between those killings he talks about his his childhood about the abuse that he witnessed he wasn't abused himself per se but he had seen his father abuse his mother and somehow that followed him and although um i think panayotis deserves to rot in jail and then in hell forever I wanted, I, I didn't want, like for the longest time as I was writing this story, it was very difficult for me and I didn't want to give him a voice, you know, for a very long time I was writing this story and I was like, oh my god, why am I writing this? Why, why is he making me write his story? Because, you know, sometimes the characters find me, I don't create the characters, they just develop inside my mind and they're like, telling me and they're like showing me what happened to them so i didn't i really didn't want to tell his story but then i realized that it's not about him it's about the victims and how society treats domestic violence and how it has been normalized for ma many years and here you know in the end of the story it says um you don't run away from me again okay or i'll kill you that's something i used to tell my wives a lot you don't run away from me again, okay, or I'll kill you. It's something I used to hear fathers say to mother a lot. Be a real man. Teach her a lesson. Don't be a sissy. That's what grandma used to tell father before he lost himself for a moment. A man's business is his own. It's what pop told me before taking me for a walk. So pop is the grandpa. Um, it's like we don't intervene. Let the man do whatever he wants with his wife. Even if it's, you know, your parents. Um, so don't be like your father, my mom said before she vanished forever. Don't be like your father. I became exactly like my father. So I think that's the takeaway and I know I spoiled the ending for you, but I think that's, for me, everything summarized, you know, in those few lines. It's the summary of the entire story. I'm glad that he didn't get away with it. I'm glad that he went to jail. I'm just sad that it took, you know, so long, so many victims for him to finally, you know, be arrested. Moving on. I'm doing okay, January. I'm doing okay is a very depressing story for such a, you know, encouraging title. Um, it's basically, you know, a day in the life of the protagonist, Ava, who's, you know, got some issues with her co-workers, you know, with her life. She's miserable, she hates everything, she has, 
you know, some very dark thoughts and she doesn't know how to deal with them. Uh, but she's dealing with them, she's trying, and at the end of the day, she recognizes that she's doing okay. So that's it. February, lingering. Okay, so lingering wasn't the original title for this. I couldn't come up with a good title until it was, you know, until the entire collection was over. I think the first title was something like it snows in my bedroom, something like that. And it's like a metaphor, it's not real snow. Um, it's a teenager, you know, in her bedroom as, you know, the Sunday night turns into Monday morning. And she's thinking, you know, about the elderly neighbor that hasn't appeared in uh, days on his balcony and she's worried. And she's also thinking about you know, this guy that she's known forever and how their relationship is changing and he's like accusing her of being a girl or something. Um, <laughs> I don't want to say more about that and it, oh, it's quarantine, like official quarantine. Um, and yeah, she's locked inside and she doesn't, yeah, you know, and she's just like spending time in her bedroom with her thoughts and that's basically it. So we have like so many such a big age range in this in, in, in this uh, short story collection. I hope that's a good thing. <laughs> okay, final story, I think. This one is probably like my favorite story of all. I don't know why. Like, I, I have so many favorites in this book, but I think the red holds such a dear place in my heart. So the final story in my collection is called The Red. And we're finishing with March, the same month that we started. So The Red is a story taking place, I think, in 2009, if I'm not mistaken. And... Oh my god, I don't know where, it, where to begin. This is also one of the longer stories. It's not as long as the Behind the Closed Door. But it's still long and it's... Okay. So it's a guy in his, his 30 and he has somehow, he feels lost in his life. You know, he has a very loving wife and they're, they have a baby on the way. And like, he's starting to have some very, um, not weird thoughts. It's like different thoughts, like thoughts that he's been repressing his whole life feelings, you know, for another person that he couldn't quite um, label like what those feelings were. So I can't, I can't say anything about. I can't, I can't. So he leaves. I, I can't. I, I'm gonna spoil it. Okay. So how do I not spoil this story? Okay, so he's confused. He's like having a really bad month or something. So he decides to leave. Um, he lies to his wife that he's going to a conference. And instead he goes to spend the weekend alone in a hotel somewhere in the woods. The thing is that this hotel is not a normal hotel. It's also not a haunted hotel, although it feels like it, but there's definitely some strange things happening. And at that hotel, something happens anyway. Um, there is this creature, this entity, something that no one has ever seen, but everyone in the, in the area knows that exists. And this entity follows him back home when he comes back. When he comes back to his wife and the baby that is on the way. And everything like goes downhill and it's... I don't know... <sighs> this entity is like killing him very, very slowly. I think I'm gonna stop there. I don't know what else to say about this without ruining it. <laughs> um, but there you have it. Um, that was the final story. 13 stories in my new short story collection. 
13 months of seclusion. I'm so happy. I'm so excited for this. Um, as I mentioned in my previous video, I, I want to publish this after the summer, probably in September. I hope I manage it in September. I have already sent it to my editor and and I'm so excited to get it to a better version of itself. That's it for today. Those were my 13 short stories that are coming up soon. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed all three videos and I'll see you next time. Bye! <laughs>